As many of you know, since 1989, Autosport has worked very closely with McLaren and the BRDC to unearth racing talent, to give young drivers a vital leg up on the ladder to the top of international racing. We've got our six young finalists from 2013 here now to talk about what the award means, their plans for 2014, and uh, they will be led out, I hope, by a bit of a legend, an ex-Grand Prix driver and Le Mans winner. He's also the chairman of the judges in the McLaren Autosport BRDC Award. Please welcome Derek Warwick, and I hope Jack Aitken, Jake Hughes, Chris Middlehurst, Seb Morris, Matt Parry, and Charlie Robertson. Hi, Derek. Hi. Good to see you guys. Let me, I've got to stand behind, behind this white line, otherwise we're in the way of the camera. Actually, Derek, can you go to the far end? I think that might work better. Derek, good to see you. Happy New Year. Um, another a, a very, very closely fought uh, McLaren Autosport BRDC award. I think you say each year, don't you, that the standard keeps impressing you. You know, it, it's, it's, it impresses me every year. I, I get these, uh, these young drivers come along and uh, you kind of feel, you know, how can they raise the bar from the year before? And, and these six guys did. It was definitely the closest competition we've had in the four years that I've been chairman. Um, very impressive. Um, you've got obviously someone like Charlie here at the age of 16, um, who's not even got a driving license, um, and you put him, his first taste of, uh, of the competition was putting him in a 625 horsepower uh, McLaren pure car. So um, it's, 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 a big, it's a big test for them. Um, we give them a, a physical test um, at Porsche Human Performance Center. Uh, they drive a simulator at base um, simulators. Um, and then, remember most of these guys, the most they've ever driven is like 220 horsepower. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're giving them 500 horsepower DTM car, um, a 500 horsepower with boost Formula 2 car, um, and also, excuse me, and also the uh, McLaren um, uh, GT3 car. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's phenomenal. And when you, when you see, when you're out on the circuit and watch these guys come into Stowe on the first lap, never driven a Formula 2 car before, and they're already on it. And um, it's, it really is quite impressive. Some of your experience and the generation in which you grew up in racing, you can impart uh, the sort of advice that says, I would have killed for the sort of leg up, the, the help that young drivers can get these days, wouldn't you? Um, you know, if, if this had been around in my day, it would have been fantastic. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure I, I was at this level at this age um, because that's how time has evolved. Um, but I have to say that if this was around in our day, it would have been fantastic. Um, and I'd like to also say, you know, people keep on talking about Matt winning the competition, um, and he did win the competition, but I think we've got six winners here. Um, unfortunately, only one person picks up the prize, um, but already these guys um, have gone to sponsors. They are now McLaren Autosport BRDC Young Driver of the Year, um, um, and I think that gives them credibility straight away, yeah. and that credibility helps them with sponsors, um, it helps them with teams, you know, and, and I get involved um, outside of this competition. I'm talking to teams with them, you know, I, 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 I talk to Fortech and I talk to people that these guys are going to go and race with for this year. Um, it's, uh, uh, how do you separate them? When you're standing on the circuit and you're watching them, they're very close in lap times, they're all articulate, they're all fit. What's the magic bullet? Um, obviously, lap time is, is very important. Um, how they handle themselves, um, how they progress. Some people come out of the box really quick and then, and then level off. Um, some come out of the box um, uh, slowly and then progress um, as they go into the two days. Um, we obviously also look at um, how they interview, um, how they talk. We look at their physical, physical fitness. Um, but I suppose at the end of the day, it's weighted towards the F2 car. Uh, we are looking for uh, the next Formula One star to come through. Um, so really, it's lap time. Um, and it, but this year, lap time was difficult. If I said that these six drivers on one of the sessions was within two tenths of one another, all six drivers driving in that same session, um, uh, that that's how close it was on one of those sessions. But uh, you know, they, they, all, they were all um, unbelievable in different ways, you know. And, and we were lucky again this year because the first day was dry, um, so we could see how they performed in the dry. 
and then the second day was wet. So, you know, we saw, we, we saw as much as we could and extracted as much as we could um, from these six drivers. Let's, uh, let's talk to them, shall we, rather than about them. Um, Jack, I'll start with you. Um, just sum up your 2013 season and uh, what it meant to you to be part of the scheme. Well, uh, in 2013, I competed in the uh, Formula Renault NEC Championship. I came uh, second, which uh, in my, uh, it was only my second year of racing, so uh, I'm already learning a lot about it. And then uh, when I heard that I got into the, uh, the award as well, obviously that was a huge achievement. And the two days at Silverstone, I mean, really eye-opening. Proper cars, proper quick cars that you were not used to. How do you think you got on? It was, um, I thought it was not too bad, actually. I, it t doesn't take too long to get used to the cars, um, especially at a track like Silverstone. It's quite nice and flowing, so it's not too hard. But, um, yeah, I thought I'd gone quite well with them. It was, um, there were a few mistakes that I wish I could go back and iron out, but that's just how it is. Jake, you had a fantastic season in the inaugural BRDC Formula 4 Championship. Um, did you expect to go so well? Um, no, definitely not. Um, first season out of karting, um, there's a lot to learn in car racing. It's a very different to karting. Um, a new championship, new car with a new team. Um, everything was new, so I had no idea what to expect going into it. Um, early season, we had the pace, but struggled a little bit um, with the results. But towards the end of the year, we got the results, and um, Lanham Racing this year, who I raced with, were absolutely fantastic, and we ended up coming away with the uh, most wins and the most pole positions. So I think uh, we did a good job to deserve the championship. And presumably, as you were winning the championship, you must have had one eye on the possibility of being selected for the scheme. Once the season was over um, and it was decided, yeah, I allowed myself to think of it a little bit. Um, but mid-season, definitely not. Um, all you're focusing on is winning the championship you're, you're competing in. Um, but the McLaren Award is, also, is everything a young driver looks for um, if you're eligible for it. Um, so to get the call from uh, Kevin Turner from Autosport to say I was one of the six was absolutely fantastic. Chris, you're another championship winner, BARC Formula Renault Championship. Uh, congratulations on that. Sets the bar quite high, doesn't it, straight away when you win a championship at a young age? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was uh, a really good year for us. Um, with obviously winning the championship was great. Um, and just, yeah, just being elected for the, this award was fantastic. Um, had a great few days. Um, I've met some uh, great people along the way, got some great connections, and um, it's a fantastic thing to be part of, and you, you learn so much as about yourself as a driver, and it really does test you um, in cars that you're not used to, um, and cars that you've obviously, uh, you know, it's very rare to drive, such as a DTM and McLaren. It's a fantastic experience. bit eye-opening to jump into cars with a lot of power when, um, you know, the likes of Derek Warwick are standing there watching your every move. Yeah, for sure. It was uh, really tricky. I found the DTM quite hard to get used to and um, to find the limit in those cars is quite tricky because obviously it's something you, you know, you're obviously used to driving a single seater car and they're a massive difference. They're heavy, you know, and got a lot of weight behind them. So um, it was tricky, but I really enjoyed the experience and yeah, love to do it again. Okay. Um, Seb, uh, sum up your 2013 season. You were in Formula 4. Happy with your performance? Yeah, fairly happy with it. Um, fairly interesting year, to say the least. Uh, we signed up very late um, due to the lack, lack of funding at the start of the year. Um, so immediately, we're on the back foot, really. Um, we managed to work the car up in, in its pace and its integrity and uh, sort out our tire, tire degradation problems. And uh, by, by the middle of the year, we were starting to challenge for podiums and finally got the win late on in the season. Um, but by that point, unfortunately, Jake has, Jake's consistent performances as well as mine is just a bit higher, higher than mine, and unfortunately he could, he, was, he could take it before I could challenge at the end of the year. Were you able to take a step back on the evaluation uh, uh, thing at Silverstone to, to really enjoy it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd just like to thank Derek you know, and all the, all the guys at the BRDC, McLaren and Autosport for having me on it, for starters. I, I didn't think, I, I thought I came third in the championship until my, my, I won my appeal. Um, so when I, when I got the phone call, I was just ecstatic, and then in the short period of time I had to work for the award, um, I made sure I worked as hard as I could, and uh, I thought I did a fairly good job. Matt, you were as white as a sheet during the uh, Autosport Awards until such time as you were announced as the winner. You probably let your hair down a bit after that, didn't you? Um, well, I think, it, like you say, it was incredibly nerve-wracking leading up, and uh, the announcement of the award isn't, isn't until very late in the evening. Um, I think when it was announced, it's 
yeah, you, you obviously thrilled that you, you've won the award, but it's just that massive mix of emotions that you have done it and 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 the fact of trying to enjoy yourself afterwards, you, you almost feel shocked and in that shock period and until the, the second day afterwards. And there's Formula One world champions, world rally champions, Le Mans winners, touring car champions sitting in the room looking at you, thinking that, you know, this guy could be the next big thing. Big pressure, isn't it, for a young driver? Yeah, I, I mean, when you, when you get announced, you obviously have to go up and, and speak in front of all of them people and all of them people you look up to um, to achieve the greatness that they have. And uh, I have to say, I was incredibly nervous trying to talk to them, talk to them people. But afterwards, you, you get to know them and you, they, they send their congratulations and you start speaking to them and, you know, you, you will take great pleasure in talking to them people. Okay. In 2013, you were a champion in Formula Renault. Happy with that? Uh, yeah, it was an extremely uh, successful year. We came from obviously winning the Formula BMW Championship or the former Formula BMW Championship. And uh, yeah, we went into to Formula Renault, um, ex you know, going in to try and win the championship. And uh, we started off really well, which uh, I think gave us a big jump um, and had a little dip sort of three quarters of the way through, but then picked it up again and, uh, and able to take that title. Okay, and uh, last but not least, Charlie, the youngest, I think, Possibly the youngest ever McLaren Autosport BRDC finalist in 25 years. Um, you feel a bit of pressure being so young and having to perform so much? Um, yeah, it's, it's obviously a lot of pressure on me and it's a lot of pressure on everyone in the, in the whole process. So, you know, I just had to treat it the same as everyone else did and, and go in with an open mind and, you know, develop uh, my driving in all, in all different styles. So, yeah, I really enjoyed the process. It was a wonderful opportunity to be given uh, by the BRDC and McLaren. So, you know, um, I just, I just took it as it came and, and did my best. I think it's hilarious. You haven't got a road license. You're, you're allowed to throw a DTM car around Silverstone in the wet. So it's really, I guess health and safety just going, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I hadn't driven a road car before, before I drove that McLaren on the start of day one. So, you know, it was, it was a steep learning curve for me, uh, especially as I'd only ever done uh, one season of single seaters. So it was, uh, you know, but it was the same for everyone in the process. And uh, it was such, just such, such a great couple of days and, and to be able to drive all those fantastic cars was just was just amazing. I don't know about you, Derek, but it makes me feel really old. <laughs> uh, I definitely feel old, yeah, definitely. But I can't say enough about these six drivers, you know. These are, they, they all have enormous potential to go all the way. Um, and when you see these guys get into the cars for the first time, they're experiencing 400, 500 horsepower. Um, it's, it's almost like they've been doing it all season. Um, and you stand at Stowe and you watch them come in that very first lap it's extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. And I, I have to take my hat off to all six of them um, because uh, I know that at, at their level of experience and age, I was a million miles behind these guys. So, you know, it's hard work to, uh, to climb the next step. And I know that some of them are suffering for, with budget, um, but I hope they all get the chance they deserve. I really do. We wish you well, guys. Uh, we'll be watching your moves, all of them, very keenly in autosport, of course, in 2014. Thanks for joining us. Jack Aitken, Jake Hughes, Chris Middlehurst, Seb Morris, Matt Parry, Charlie Robertson. Thank you, guys.